So yes, guys, Trashman Tennis back at it. Week two is upon us. Actually, it's done and dusted. The scores are in. Let's take a look at what happened. Cat, you always interrupt. Get out of here. Ben was playing a fellow UTR3, went down to the wire, neck and neck. I'm glad to see that it was a very compelling um, competitive match. So stay tuned for those highlights at the end of the video. As for me, as the title suggests, I was playing the most difficult, the toughest opponent I've ever faced. He was a UTR8 due to my recent form being so poor. I'm plummeted down to a UTR4, so double the player that I am. Uh, the tale of two sets, and one set I was obliterated per you know, per as expected. And then the second set, I got my act together and made it a little bit more competitive. Some juicy points, which you're about to see now. If you uh, like this content, like the video, and maybe even subscribe to the channel. Remember that Trashman Tennis is all about the tennis trash we've been. Let's head down to Melbourne Park. So yes, guys, I say Melbourne Park because look at the uh, court, blue on blue. Absolute eye candy, felt like I was in Rod Laver Arena. But even more gorgeous than the court was this man's backhand slice. Look at that, hovering just above the net. Uh, I don't know what it is. Most of these hard courts in the USMA are blue court with the green perimeter. But it's extremely rare for me to see blue on blue. So I was fantasizing that I was playing at the AO. But that fantasy quickly turned a nightmare <laughs> after just a couple points when I realized I was way in over my head. Uh, this guy was just so... If I had to sum up his game in one word, it's easy. It's easy. It's consistency, man. Master, master of it. Nothing flashy about his game whatsoever. No, wasn't blown away by his pace or his spin or certainly not his serve. I would actually argue I had the more formidable serve that, between the two of us, but uh, that was about it. It's just everything came back, and it, it, usually at our level, it's the backhand side is the weaker flank. Not this guy. This guy, his backhand was equally as strong as his forehand. I felt like I did a pretty good job, actually, more than usual, of hitting cross court. Normally, regrettably, I'm down the line too much, but uh, this go around hitting some with some nice angles. So uh, and there's one positive to take away. I've got to continue to do so. But with him, it was just everything was coming back regardless. I was trying to pepper his backhand, and it was just withstanding my uh, my attacks. I uh, felt a little sheepish, a little uh, lackadaisical in the first set. I don't know what my deal was, but that competitive spirit and that fire was definitely not as, as normal tenacity. Uh, and next thing I know, it was like a half hour gone by and the, <laughs> the world was passing me by and I was on the verge of swallowing a bagel and, uh, at 05. To try to told myself I was gonna get to act, my act together, and of course it was way too little, too late. It was uh, the bagel was indeed stuck down my throat. To cut to the chase. So second set was a little bit different. I turned up the heat just a just a little bit, but the yeah the mistakes were still prevalent. Versus uh, especially compared to his mistake rate. I mean they were just few and far between. So it's really just the theme of the uh, the whole match. Oh, I should have put that ball away, and instead, he chips me with some uh, a plum. So in the end, it was uh, we were on serve actually, all the way to three three. He holds, so it was three four. I'm serving to stay in it. Um, you know, it looked like it was gonna be a fast and furious finish in that second set. Maybe I eke out a win and take it to a third set tiebreak, where who knows what can happen. But of course. Uh, the mistakes got the better of me. This was 30-40 of that all-important game, and I stay in it to take it to Deuce. This is Deuce right here, and then just the decision-making is piss poor. Let's see what happens here, if I recall correctly. It was just a boneheaded move. Yeah, wh like, why am I forehand slicing it down the middle, man? Next point, it's bad out in this, again, colossal game, man. Oh, a forehand rally ball mistake you hate to see. So I would go down 3-5 and he would promptly serve it out uh, to make it 6-3 in the end. So he would beat me 95 out of 100 times. Got to hold my head up high and just continue to sharpen my game. On to Ben's match. Let's see what happened there. 
I had a thrilling matchup in week two against a uh, UTR 3.75 ranked opponent. And what I liked the most was he took things seriously and we had a nice solid warm up, getting into a good rhythm on our ground strokes and serves. And that led to some quality play. So that by the time we started the match, I was feeling good. I was feeling comfortable. Um, overall, I was most pleased with my backhand during the match. My opponent was a self-proclaimed double specialist, so he loved to get to the net and work those angles, and that involved a lot of him attacking my backhand, and I felt it held up really well under pressure. Um, it kept me in points, got some long rallies, and overall, I was just, I, I was just loving it. I was having a blast out there. Um, I did have a decent serving day. I was feeling good with a lot of pace, and I was able to use that for a little bit of serve and volley action. Not all the time, um, but sometimes it was successful. I also had a handful of aces, which is rare for me. Um, it felt good to get some free points, but for every one of those, I had double faults, which led to cupcake serves, which my opponent just gobbled up. I mean, like Pac-Man, he was out there just and there was nothing I could do. <laughs> um, I did have double faults. <laughs> Went down a double break here. a stack of flapjacks. Um, and it was a, uh, a really intense match. We were lockstep. I never, there was never much daylight between us. We broke each other frequently and then we would hold serves. Um, long rallies, unfortunately, definitely went his way. I felt this guy had a really clear game plan. Woo! Like he wanted to get to the net and I just didn't have that game plan. I was playing get the ball over. Um, I told myself I was playing defensive tennis. <laughs> because I felt his grind strokes were stronger than me, so I was trying to just go high and deep. Um, but overall, it was super fun, super competitive. Uh, we, we had a lot of healthy respect for one another. And one of the things that kept me in the match was um, this guy just gifting me points on uh, his net approaches. I mean, it, sometimes it was it was inexplicable. He would just dump them in. I was like, oh, it's over for sure. It's a miracle I'm still alive. Defensive tennis works. Seven point tie break. Birdman, this is for you. It did go the distance. Uh, we went to a tie break, which was good because I went to one last week, absolutely crumbled. I did not do the same this week. I felt it was way more competitive. Um, and we ended up going the distance. He, uh, he did take me down 9-7 in the first tie break, but it was way more competitive, so I was so happy about that. And uh, in the second set, he felled me 6-4. So um, this match went down as another L, 7-6, or 6-7, 6-4. Whatever.